Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today, as promised, I have a mistakes video for you. I'm going to talk about the list of mistakes I made building this very simple little tool tote. Uh, obviously, I'm using it to hold all of my glue bottles and stuff. I'm going to quickly empty it out here and I'm going to talk about all of the mistakes I made while building this thing. Guys, I don't want you to think mistakes are a bad thing. Mistakes happen to everybody. Uh, you know, some of, you know, we all watch other YouTube videos. Uh, you know, there, there's a, a Pask Makes video, a gentleman down in Australia, I believe. He always kind of talks about the mistakes he makes and how he gets around them. I think that's the thing I like the most about his channel is how he gets around mistakes he makes. Let's be honest, even Paul Sellers, occasionally you'll hear him go, oops, that's when you know he made a mistake. I mean, it's kind of funny. He does it every once in a while in a video. And, and, and I'm just going to go with, if Paul Sellers makes mistakes, you and I, you know, it's destined and we're going to make some mistakes. They happen. What's good about them is how you get around them, how you fix them. And I think there's three different things you can do with a mistake. You can ignore it and just leave it in the project and occasionally you can hide it and you don't see it and it's no big deal. You can work around it, which generally means you might be altering something to get through the mistake. Uh, generally working around something will cost you some extra time, but not necessarily materials because you're working around the mistake you made to work with what you're already working with. Or you flat out have to fix it, which generally means more time and more material. You cut something too short, the piece of material is no good anymore, you got to get a new one, it's costing you time and materials. Those are the three things that I see that we do when we fix these things. I've made a note of eight mistakes that I've seen while editing this particular little build. And to be perfectly honest with you guys, there's probably more. And if you see more, go right ahead and point them out to me um, in the comments below. As you can see, I keep a lot of stuff in this little tote. Um, it's basically everything I use for glue. I got uh, crazy glues in there. I got some liquid nails in here. I have some epoxy and I have my woodworking glues and it all works fine in here. And this little tote is solid and it works well. So literally even though I made eight mistakes, I got something that works fine for me. And, and that's the thing you need to really think about here is did the project actually succeed? In this case, yes it did. Are there some things here I don't like? Yes. So let's get right into the list guys. I'll explain to you what happened, what I did, and if I worked around it, fixed it, or left it. And I have a list here because eight is a lot. <laughs> the first mistake is the biggest mistake I think in my mind and it actually aggravates me. It's the only one that really kind of irks me uh, because it's a very bad mistake and it's, uh, you know, it's just something I shouldn't have done. And I'm going to show you this angle right here and you should be able to see in here that there is some staining on this corner, I'll take a close-up picture and put it in here right now. Guys, what that is, is that's glue that I didn't clean up properly and then stained over. Um, I did show you a clip of me sanding, and when I was sanding, I said cleaning up the inside, something like that, before assembly. And I did do that. But then when I did the glue up, um, I'm going to be honest, I am a horrible gluer. I always over apply glue. It's just, I don't know why, it's just me. I put too much glue on, I get too much squeeze out, glue drips all over the place. I make a mess. It is what it is. I wiped the glue out of here. I realized I made that mistake, but then got moving on, got moving on on something else. And when I got time to stain, I totally forgot I had glue that I wiped up there and I didn't go back and sand it down and make sure it was smooth. And the minute I started putting the stain there, I was like, oh my God, because when you use a dark stain like this, this glue coloring shows up really bad. Now, I chose to just ignore this mistake. I left it. It's inside of the box for the most part, and, and really the box is going to be full. It's not something I'm selling or giving to somebody. I would never sell or give something like this away. But for me, in my shop, it's there. It's kind of a good reminder for me to remember that because it's my glue box. You know, all my glue bottles are in here. So every time I'm going to use glue now, I'll be reminded, clean the darn glue up. So it's kind of a good reminder for me. But... To me, this was the most aggressive error. I, this error really aggravated me. I, uh, 
you know, to me it's a very rookie mistake and I shouldn't be doing these kinds of mistakes. And I definitely shouldn't be putting them in videos. I was already thinking I'm going to do a mistakes video when I got to this point, so I left it. Honestly, I was going to sand it out and hide it from you and not put it in the video. And that's something I really want to talk about. You know, many YouTubers, quite frankly, make mistakes all the time and just edit them out of their videos. I don't try to edit my, you know, uh, videos to hide all of my mistakes. Of these eight mistakes, five of them are in the video. Three of them I edited out because they didn't provide any value to the video. I show my mistakes and I try to talk about them. Maybe somebody else will learn from them. That's why I'm doing this video. Um, so moving on to the next error. And this one I'm not going to talk about too much here because I actually talked about it in the video. So the video last week is right here. Uh, go back and watch it. But the initial design, these two sides were actually supposed to be up here. They were supposed to be another inch higher. But I got a little wonky doing my sanding on these sides and I went past the line. So these sides would have gone past the curve and there would have been a gap here if I didn't do something. What I did here was what we call a workaround. I cut an inch off of each side so that they were hitting flat spots. And I did say in the video that I think the proportions do look better, and I think they do. If this side went up to here, these ends would look a little stubby. So, quite frankly, I think that was a mistake that in the long run made the, the, uh, the end result look better. And... Uh, Quite frankly, uh, you know, I kind of explained that in the video, so I'm going to move on on this one. This was a workaround. I, I was able to change the dimensions a little bit and uh, move on. Now, remember, a workaround, if you're changing dimensions, if you're working off a plan, you really can't do that. Changing dimensions if it was a kitchen cabinet, you know, think about that. You can't change the dimensions of a kitchen cabinet. It won't look right on the wall. Something like this, building for myself, not using a plan, free-forming, yeah, you can make a change like that to get around an error. Um, so I didn't have to waste any material. Moving on to number three. Uh, number three is one that I actually did not show you in the video. Um, this bottom, when I put it in here, I actually held the bottom to the rabbits and made marks, went downstairs. You know, I used my T-square, marked the lines, went downstairs and cut it. Now, I'm gonna introduce to you my kind of built-in excuse. And it's really a, a fake excuse. There's no excuses for some of these mistakes. Um, but, you know, I do do YouTube, which means I got lighting, microphones, cameras to mess with. Literally, that piece of plywood, putting it in there, making two marks, taking the T-square, drawing the lines, running the table saw and cutting it, less than a five-minute uh, process for me if I'm not filming. It was 15 or 20 minutes by the time I had to undo the camera, move the camera downstairs, mess with the tripods, mess with the lights, blah, 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 blah. You know, I know that sounds like an excuse, and it flat out is, but we all have things that um, uh, get in our way. You know, it could be you have kids in the next room that you're kind of watching that day. It could be family. It could be work. It could be anything uh, that kind of gets in your way and distracts you. For me, sometimes it's filming YouTube. I was worried about other things, and when I finally made the cut, I cut on the wrong side of the line. <sighs> hey, we've all cut on the wrong side of the line, right? What are you going to do? Well, unfortunately, in this case, the only thing I could do was go get another piece of plywood and remake it and put it in there. You didn't notice that, and you didn't know that in the video, because I just showed you me making the cut, and the next clip was me putting some clamps on it right here. You didn't know I had to do it twice. I, I didn't show you that. Um, that's an instance where I did edit it out of the video. Um, number four is another mistake that I'm not very happy about. It was in the video. You guys all saw it. Anybody that uh, uses a router table a lot would notice that my uh, insert plate that the router attaches to was not flush with the table for the router table. And if you notice, when I was moving the board across, when the board reached the meeting point between the insert plate and the table, I had to pick it up a little bit to keep moving forward. Now what that did is it slightly changed the rabbit that I was fitting the bottom into. Truth be told, that rabbit is concealed and the, the bottom itself hides that little blip in there. So this is another one that I ignored. I knew I was making a little imperfection in the 
rabbit when I was picking that up and moving on. I will fix the router table before I use it again. Um, and, and quite frankly, that's just another mistake uh, that, you know, by the time I was into making the cut, I realized it. My, my head said, well, that little rabbit's not going to mind that little blip. It's going to be hidden by the bottom. So I just moved on. I ignored it. There's no, you can't see it anywhere in here that that was like that. So it's, it's a mistake that didn't affect the product at all. So no big deal there. <clears throat> this next issue isn't really a mistake. I didn't do anything wrong on this one. I wanted to have a lot more turning in this video, and I only had about 10 seconds of turning and maybe 15 seconds of sanding. The problem is I have two lathes. I have a Delta MIDI lathe, a little pick up and move around one. I set it up downstairs on a little workmate. I had the camera set up. I had the lights set up. I had another camera set up up above to really do a good little uh, five minute lathe thing for you during the part of this video. I haven't used that MIDI lathe in quite a while. When I turned it on, the belt broke. It's not an easy belt to find. I have to order it online. Now, I own another lathe, but that lathe is kind of in the corner of my basement in the unfinished side, kind of in storage with stuff piled up all around it. My options were go buy a piece of three-quarter inch dowel rod or just take my stock, move it to the other lathe and have, you know, crunch in with stuff behind me, back to me and do it really quick. And that's what I chose to do. I couldn't even reach around to the area to change the speeds very well because it's not variable speed. I had to open it up to move a belt. I just went with it guys, used it at a slower speed than I would have done that and quickly just showed you the roughing gouge and then the sander just to show you that I got this. Um, in a perfect world, um, you know, the belt wouldn't have broke. I mean, is it a mistake? No. The, the mistake was I wasn't really prepared to move the lathe. The other lathe is too heavy. I really couldn't move it by myself. So, you know, you know I worked around the problem. I, I basically just got it done. I also, in my mind, could have gone and bought a three-quarter inch piece of hardwood dowel and, and fixed that as well. So I had options there when the belt broke. Um, the other issue with the handle is this is not the actual handle I wanted to use in this project. Now, again, this is something that you didn't see. Um, I wanted this to be three-quarters of an inch at the ends, come in and taper to about an inch and a quarter. Give it a little more meat in the middle, something more for my hands to hold on to. Give it a better look. It would have looked better if this was not just a piece of dowel. Um, this is a mistake of time management, I will tell you. I wanted this video to get out Saturday morning because I like to do the Saturday shorts. I work a full-time job, guys, so I have to work around my uh, daily schedule to do some of this stuff. I get up early in the morning. Hey, I'm an old fart. It is what it is. And um, I do some of this stuff early before work, or I do some of it after work. Uh, I wanted to get this box glued up, at least in clamps, before I went to work. So when I got off work, I could continue on with the finishing. The problem is, if I were going to do the handle with the taper, I wouldn't be able to slide it all the way through. It needed to be put in during assembly. And that meant waiting until the afternoon, going down, turning it it wouldn't have been ready for Saturday morning. So I made a decision to go with a flat dowel so that I could insert it afterwards at the end so that I could turn the dowel later and keep moving with the project. Um, again, I'm kind of blaming my YouTube here, but you know, th there is some time constraints, but every project, it doesn't matter if you're doing YouTube or you're building something for a customer, you have time that you have to get it done by. And that was something that just the time dictated the steps I took. So unfortunately, I changed the design. I worked around the design of the handle to get the product done and get it ready for Saturday morning. <clears throat> now there's uh, one other thing here, and I don't know if you can see this anymore, but these two boards, um, this whole product was made out of uh, uh, my video I did two weeks ago where I took some 2x4s and 2x6 and resawed them on the table saw. These are all 2x4s and 2x6s that I ripped and glued up to make wider to make all of this wood. You know, we all know construction lumber is wet. Uh, I did the, the resaws a couple weeks ago. These cupped a little bit. You really can't see it here now, but these boards, these two ends, you could see it in the video in a couple of places. You could see that they were cupped. I made sure that I took the two boards, they were cupped like this, that's how I put them on here, and I clamped them very good all across the bottom and the sides and glued it all there 
And, you know, our glue is good enough to hold these days, so it's not going to be a problem. I'm fine with it. The little bit of cupping, if you run your hand here, you can kind of feel it on the inside. It's, you know, a 32nd of an inch maybe. It's no big deal. It doesn't affect the project at all. Um, it is what it is, you know. Uh, they cupped. I didn't want to take... I didn't want to take another sixteenth of an inch off to flatten the board, so I just worked with it. I knew clamping and gluing would hold it. The last mistake that I'm going to talk about here is I did do some cross-grain uh, gluing. This board goes this way, and this board goes this way. So these two boards are going to be in contention, and they're glued up here. That is generally a no-no. Um, my guess is, because this board is going to want to move this way, and this board is going to want to move this way, this way, um, this board might crack. It's possible. It's a very small board. It's only four inches. It may live uh, a long life. It may get a crack. It may start cracking come November when the seasons change. I'll keep an eye on it. If it does crack, I'll let you know, because this is going to be sitting in my shop for the next God knows how long holding my glue, glue bottles. So if it does crack, I'll let you know, because that's something else you all should know about. Ways to get around that, if you wanted to know, would be to just use some little finishing nails here instead of gluing it. Uh, that would give it a little room for movement. Um, wood movement is something that you really have to understand and know about when you're doing things like this. I knew this when I was putting this together, and I did roll the dice thinking that it's small enough and it's thin enough that it may or may not crack, and it might just be a small little hairline holding glue bottles, it was going to be okay. So that was a roll of the dice, guys. I did that on purpose. I knew I was doing it when I did it. Um, time will tell. So that's the eight that I noticed. I'm sure there were more. Please put in the comments anything else you saw that I did wrong, because, uh, you know, I like talking about the mistakes. They help people. You know, nobody, you know, nobody would have known about three of these that I, I told you I did after the fact. You wouldn't have known I cut this bottom wrong and did it a second time. You wouldn't have known that I changed the uh, dimensions here. And honestly, uh, you really wouldn't have known that the belt broke on that uh, lathe if I didn't tell you here. The other five are in the video, though. If you go back and watch it again, those other five, you'll see them here. Um, so I hope this helps you guys. I hope uh, you like this video. If you did, please go ahead and hit the like button. Uh, as always, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and have a great day. We'll see you in the next one.